Danger Dolan. From underwhelming sequels with possessed landmarks to more underwhelming sequels with a clusterfuck of villains, we look at 15 disappointing movies. Number 15. Miami Vice. Generally, film remakes of popular TV shows can go two ways, thoughtfully inventive and entertaining, or totally boring and devoid of imagination. Guess which one this one is. This looked set to be a sleek adaptation of the decadently 80s TV show, but ended up being a typical cop action thriller, with the same tired story we'd seen before, with a blue filter over the camera. With the stylish Michael Mann behind the camera, it was expected this would be a good film, or at least interesting, but turned out to be one boring disappointment. Turns out you need to do more than just make everything look blue. Number 14. Jurassic Park 3. Well, if The Lost World was a mediocre disappointment, then Jurassic Park 3 is an even further disappointment on that. So even though our expectations had been lowered for this, the third film in the dinosaur cloning saga, it still managed to be a further fuck up than having Jeff Goldblum chasing a T-Rex around California. This film pretty much killed off all our hopes for a good sequel to Jurassic Park. How did they do this? Well, Apart from being a mess and turning the T-Rex into a weak-ass bitch, it also had a dream sequence where a raptor talks to Sam Neill. So if you're still criticizing Jurassic World, maybe you should watch this one again. Number 13. Bruno. Oh how long ago the hilarity of Borat seems to be, or at least the last time one of these characters were funny. Bruno, while funny on Da Ali G Show, failed to translate to the big street as anything more than unfunny and obnoxious, relying on gross-out humor that boils down to, oh that's totally gay bro to make you feel uncomfortable doesn't really work. After Borat becoming a pop culture icon, Bruno failed to come close to achieving the same heights, becoming nothing more than something we would all like to forget. Number 12. Ghostbusters 2. A disappointing sequel to a classic film that almost everyone on the face of the earth loves. Well, it has to be Ghostbusters 2. Killing the franchise in one swift blow, this infamous sequel seemed to be well on track before it hit screens, then everything went to shit. Or more accurately, slime. Featuring idiotic moments like making the Statue of Liberty walk with a NES controller and magic goo. Yep. Though being fair, it's not terrible. There are good parts, it's just a massive step down from the first film making the disappointment. Number 11. Prometheus. The film that can't make up its mind if it's a prequel to Alien or its own thing, which makes it terrible at doing either. Hype was high for the film being returned to sci-fi form for the director of Blade Runner, but it ended up being a mess of tone and convoluted storylines while confusing everyone over how connected to Alien this film was. Chuck in a search for the gods subtext, and you have a cliched movie that pissed off a lot of people. Still, at least it was a step up for the Alien universe from Alien vs Predator Requiem, but then, not many things could be as bad as that. Number 10. Public Enemies. Oh, Michael, man, how can you be back on this list again already? None of us learned our lesson from Miami Vice then. This historical crime drama about John Dillinger should have been a crime epic for the ages, but instead featured odd cinematography and off performances from almost the whole cast. The film doesn't ever really feel compelling or interesting, which is a big misfire for a movie about America's greatest gangster. While not a terrible film by any means, it leaves the impression that it was close to amazing, but got lost in the editing process. And that's the real crime in this movie. Number 9. Matrix Revolutions. While Matrix Reloaded was a massive, confusing misstep for the trilogy, we all thought, nah, hey, they got this. It'll all make sense by the end of Revolutions. We were all wrong, and should have realized that this was never going to turn out well. It was always going to be anticlimactic, pseudo-philosophical bullcrap that bored the hell out of us. While the Battle for Zion's kind of interesting, the stuff with Neo is very, very convoluted. Oh uh, well, we probably should have known after the whole Architect stuff in Reloaded that this was building to be a big disappointment that was clearly poorly designed from the start. Number 8. Aliens 3. Oh man, Aliens kicked so much ass, this sequel is going to be amazing, man. There better be power loaders fighting a hundred alien queens and new and Hicks kicking ass. Oh wait, they're dead now? And there's only one alien? Okay, well, that could work. And Ripley is stuck on a prison planet with no weapons? Well, fuck. This is exactly the opposite of what everyone wanted after the action roller coaster that was Aliens, with Alien 3 being a brooding gothic horror that moves at a snail's pace. Again, Alien 3 does deserve more credit than it gets for being dark as fuck, but as a sequel, it's a huge mistake. Well, at least in space, no one can hear you cry in disappointment. Number 7. Star Trek Insurrection. First Contact had just come out before it being a massive success by showing the next generation crew moving away from the tropes of the show. Insurrection, though. Feeling like an overblown two-part TV episode, Insurrection was a massive letdown from the near-perfect film that had preceded it. Featuring the same flaws that produced the worst in the show, like having subplots like Worf getting a pimple and the smoothness of Riker's face post-shave, they come off as silly rather than endearing. 
Still, it was better than Star Trek V, but that was nowhere near the letdown of a cinematic experience as was Insurrection. This is why everyone thinks the odd number Star Trek films suck. Number six, Godzilla. The guys from Independence Day reviving everyone's favorite nuclear mutated lizard destroying New York? Sign me the hell up for that! At least that's what I thought in 1998, or how wrong it went. Instead of getting a film starring Godzilla, we get a T-Rex and Raptor ripoff along with Matthew Broderick being a tool on screen for 90 minutes. Yay, thanks Roland. While it could be argued the most recent Godzilla reboot was equally as disappointing, I'd like to remind you the hype that went behind this film. The marketing was more of a monster than Godzilla was in the damn movie. Number 5. Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines Finally, a sequel to T2 with a grown-up, non-annoying John Connor and Arnie playing his most iconic role. Every 90s kid's dream was coming true. However, fate had other plans. John Connor was more annoying than he was as a kid. Arnie looked tired and the villain was about as imposing as a damp cloth. Bad jokes and terrible dialogue made what should have been epic feel pedestrian and barring its twist ending, it's all forgettable. 3 lowered all of our expectations on what was to come, making Salvation and Genesis almost guaranteed to be bad. How the box office performance of both films can show just how badly Terminator 3 burned us all. Number 4. Spider-Man 3 After producing what was considered at the time to be the greatest comic book movie ever made in Spider-Man 2, hopes were impossibly high for Raimi's third. The symbiote, Sandman, Harry Osborn going full crazy and the rumours about Venom appearing were a feast for comic book fans expecting a dark, gritty journey through Peter Parker's soul. But we instead had a lousy, emo journey through Parker's angst with too many villains crowding the screen. Needless to say, the backlash was pretty loud with everyone complaining about emo Peter Parker and the dance number. But there are still good moments in there, they just became very hard to see when her expectations were so high. Number 3. The Godfather 3 Again, coming off a massively acclaimed first and second film, was there any chance of the third film being any good? Looking at Coppola's work produced post-Apocalypse now, it's arguable that this film was always going to be mediocre. Bad casting and an unsatisfying story put part three in the category of average, even though it was nominated for several Oscars. But of course making this film was an offer Coppola couldn't refuse, resulting in us all being disappointed in the weakest link in the Ultimate Mob trilogy. Number two. All three Star Wars prequels. We had to get to this at some point. Years of waiting, great trailers, a solid cast and cool new ships and weapons. How wrong we were about how this was going to pan out. Phantom Menace has one of the most insane backlashes ever. So much so that it tarnished the next two films as at least it wasn't as bad as Episode 1. But really Episode 2 isn't that much better and while Revenge of the Sith is a solid but just okay film, it has nothing on what we all expected these movies to be. It was something that fans had wanted for so long and it was a spectacular disaster. One that Lucas wouldn't escape for three films or learn his lesson with. Number 1. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull like we said, Lucas didn't learn his lesson and this time dragged Steven Spielberg along for the ride as well, in a film that South Park said is like watching rape. It seems everyone was so hyped up discussing if Harrison Ford was too old for the role, they forgot to Google search the mythology behind the Crystal Skulls and were surprised that the movie had aliens. But while that can be reasoned away, you can't excuse Shia LaBeouf swinging around with CGI monkeys in the jungle. We'd address the nuking in the fridge thing too, but the internet has already done that one billion times. So let's just try to forget it all. That's it for this countdown. And have a go!